Well, let's talk about what governance is needed around <laughs> citizen development. What does that actually mean? I mean, let's. I, I realize we're trying to do short videos here, but uh, <laughs> let's. Did uh, you just drag us into a forty-five-minute webinar? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> I think the depth process, charge went Christian. off. Mm. Yeah. So, what does governance mean in 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 a citizen development world? That's a damn good question. Yeah. yeah so I've um. So I spend a lot of time answering this question actually with a lot of my clients. Um. I think what ends up happening is they call and they say I have X problem. We go in, we try to fix it, and the very first thing is, okay, well, who's doing what? What decisions have you made? What administrative configurations have you decided on? And they're like, oh, well, we're just, you know, all kind of siloed and doing our own thing. And I think one of the big things that <clears throat> we don't think about now that we thought about before is that before every application, um, to some degree, had some sense of ownership. Um, we had the exchange guy and the AD guy and the SharePoint guy and everybody kind of was the king of their castle. And so they made those decisions. And in the the more mature organizations that I've been in, there were steering committees where those decisions rolled up to governance committees where they made decisions about applications and security and things like that. And I think when we start talking about the cloud, that becomes a lot, a lot more blurry um, because those roles have kind of shifted around and different people are doing different things and security has changed. And so um, the first thing that I do with people is basically um, I have kind of, I have a document that where I've just basically compiled, here's all the different parts and pieces to Office 365. Um, what decisions are you making around those? Are you making decisions? Are you being proactive in what you're doing as opposed to just kind of using things as they're thrown at you? How, what's your decisions for what your users can do? What are you allowing them to do? What are you not allowing them to do? And is all of that documented? So I mean, I think governance is the idea of understanding what do you have? What are you choosing to do and why? And are you documenting all of that more than anything? And then after that, it gets into details. Well, I think the next piece of that is, is because uh, there's a lot of organizations that go through the trouble of documenting, put like setting up those, those guide rails, those guardrails, um and but then the you know how are they actively disseminating that information and as it changes as people are working within that system over time you know what's the level of transparency and the level of communication that's happening mm -hmm. that's where i've seen where companies have struggled the most it's not in starting out the right direction it's maintaining that it's the, more of the the, the, you know, the transparency, the conversation, the communication, that aspect of governance, which is so critical, uh, especially around uh, you know, your citizen development strategy. Yeah, I think I want to tag team on what Sharon said, because um, one of the big clients I worked for for was supposed to be six months ended up being six years. So I guess I liked what I was doing, but I started out, they would come to me with with what they wanted. Here, I want you to build me X, Y, Z. And they give me, the, the we, nobody ever really talked about the business requirements. They saw something shiny. They saw a webinar or they saw somebody present something or like, ooh, oh, I want this, right? And I'd build it for them. And it would be really clunky because it really didn't fit. And then after, it's like, okay, what are you trying to do? After they finally explained to me what they, they were trying to accomplish, I stopped them right away when they said, I need you to build me this. And my... My first question is like, what's your problem? Not what's your what's problem. Your problem? <laughs> what's, what, well, that's a comment I problem? ask every customer. Like, what's your problem? <laughs> yeah, because often what they know is all that they've been exposed to. But like you and I, all of us, we're exposed to a whole lot more. We know a lot about the different capabilities and what what the like you're saying, the guardrails are, what the pros and the cons are of using different tools for different things. And just because I think planner is the shiny tool in the drawer doesn't mean that's the best solution for them. You know, so they, you know, it's like, no, if you're wanting X, Y, Z, then you need to use project online. Or if you are just needing to track some tasks, you can use a SharePoint list for that. We don't, you know, if you're wanting to do subtasks and things like that. So, you know, there's, there's, a lot of um, discussion that needs to happen with those people before you start fixing what they think they want or creating what they think they want without all the information. I I, I love that task one, Sherry, because I, I one, one time gave a session at a conference of 
what task management tool to use for what in Office 365, I never gave it again because, oh my God, <laughs> the audience questions. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I've um, done that session multiple times. It's one of the the ones I enjoy doing it, but it's like an uh, there there's something new and it's changing and evolving constantly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's my Tip Tuesday series right now. Is all on task management. We're starting Planner mm -hmm. Tuesday. This makes good on you. <laughs> what, what I think to, to Christian's question originally, and Sharon kind of touched on this um, in terms of governance in the citizen development world. Two things. One way too fast people jump to technology for governance when governance can mean actual human guidance yes like technology is not always a solution and that ha that has you have to pair it together um mm -hmm. because technologies people are going to find their way around your technology limits no matter what you do and they're not going to understand them the second thing is i don't think people i don't think end users understand what being a citizen developer means. I think John in HR having an Excel spreadsheet that he started in 2015 and now has become 10,000 lines long with a record of every person that's been hired and uh, just pulling this example out, out of nowhere, but this is now a business critical Excel spreadsheet and is John a citizen developer? Does John know he's a citizen developer? That's a fact. Yeah. Yep. So okay. I did add, um, I added some links into the spreadsheet, Christian, um, around the Microsoft maturity model. Um, I'm just going to do a big plug for that right now because I feel yeah. like <clears throat> if you're curious about governance at a very high level and especially how the Microsoft community sees governance, the, the Microsoft maturity model um, is fantastic. I was introduced to it for a while, a while back, I think by Christian originally, and now I participate in that team and I help them. Um, but essentially the idea is saying, where are we and how can we be better? Mm -hmm. And what are we doing and what are the things that we can improve within our organization to be more mature in our practices? Um, and it, it, governance is just such a big word in terms of, well, are we doing this and are we doing that? And what decisions are we making? But more importantly, where are we when we talk about citizen development? What are we doing for our community? What are we doing to help them? And how can we mature that to a point that we're getting the most out of it? We're optimizing the opportunity. And I think the Microsoft maturity model, in my opinion, does a fantastic job of saying, let's kind of step back and look at this from an optimization maturity level, and then let's apply that to the applications. And a lot of times what we find is that it's not, like Max said, it's not about the application. It's not about the technology. It's about the people. It's about the process. It's about the culture. Um, that underlies all of this more than it is the technology. But how are we optimizing those things so that the te technology is being used in the way it's supposed to be being used and being, you know, how are we getting the most value out of it? Yeah, that's it. You know, I, I find that uh, governance for Power Platform is not something you buy. Mm -hmm. It's It's more about... And it's less about the tool and it's more about the the mentoring yeah. and the advocacy than it is the control from that that traditional IT view that we may have had from many years ago where we, we lock everything down um, and prevent people from doing things. It's, it's not about preventing, it's about enabling. Yes. Uh, hopefully with the right uh, safeguards in place. So uh, interesting topic. Well, there I could not agree more. Like it, <laughs> you, if, if, if you're turning something off saying, you know what, I'm, if somebody comes to me and they have a need for it, let, we'll turn it on. They're not going to come to you. Yep. They're going to go somewhere else. They, right. they, they, they won't know it exists. Yep. Okay. Well, one of the, one of the things too, to the earlier topic about, uh, you know, building solution somebody that just needs something to work today and they go and build something never intending for it to be an enterprise a company-wide solution i just we're looking for that but the mistake that's made and we saw this through for those of us that come through the up through the sharepoint ranks with with sharepoint solutions and there's a reason why microsoft has moved away from that messaging of sharepoint is not a swiss army knife it's you should not be building you know, all these other solutions where there are point solutions that even Microsoft has as well as third parties, 
that are specific around there. There's things that it's meant to do and things that it does very well, but you can't, you shouldn't just go build everything within it. Can you build an issue tracking solution on top of SharePoint? Like you can, you know, and, and depends on the scale that you want for that, or, Hey, there's a Microsoft list template for the lightweight that just does that. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing that I've even started seeing work within my own organization now is where there is part of the the governance process, like you know, citizen developers go and create things, and even within teams, there's a process of like I I went and I requested, and it's a immediate turnaround time. I'm provisioning as part of our provisioning process for a new team, but there's purpose. It asked me a bunch of questions around it, and then at time intervals, IT reaches back out and says is this still active? Is this still the purpose? Is this, are there the right people involved? And so as part of that governance process, they're going back and checking. And that's where it fits into the citizen developer as well. It's fine to go and build these spot solutions, but there should be ch natural checkpoints yeah. after 30 days, then after six mm -hmm. months or whatever it is that you build into it, where you're going back and having a conversation, is this still the intended purpose? Or do we need to do something else around this? Is this being adopted more broadly? And do we need to be looking at building a more scalable, supportable, enterprise-wide solution? And it's and it comes back to it's not about the technology. It's about having the conversations and building that. And to some degree, and this has been my experience historically, it's the consistency in having those conversations. Yeah. People then build trust Well, they know that, hey, I can go do something on the fly today because I need it. No one's going to stop me from doing that within the guy, the guardrails, you know, the security compliance guardrails. But that, you know, they'll come back and check with me because I've already been, I've been with my company for a year now with that point, one year. And I've had a couple things I went and created early on where they came back as part of that process. And like, was that still needed? It's like, no, it lived. I forgot that I created that asset. Yes, we can archive that. We can retire that thing. It was great to see that. And I have more trust in the process now having seen that work. I mean, well, I think I've the key that. word you said was sustainability. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you can build this stuff and it, it has to be, if that person leaves who built it, then that's where you share and you're not your head because that's where we usually get called in to fix stuff yep. because so it broke after the person that created it left and it, nobody know how they did it i'll go back a couple of years after i built a solution and go how the heck did i do that <laughs> you know i don't know how i did yeah. it so yeah this comes let's back just to well document it it comes back yeah. to the importance of our overall architecture and like enterprise architecture and enterprise requirements management and analysis, which I think is a little bit considered a luxury good in our world. Um, and, you know, when the economy kind of goes down, I think architecture and analysis and, and BAs are probably a lot of times the first people to be cut because they don't consider them essential. But truthfully, when we think about modern architecture, um, I think they're becoming more and more important to long term sustainability. So one of my favorite stories, you said BAs, one of my favorite stories is I went to visit a federal customer a few years ago. We did an all day workshop. They brought in their SharePoint admin, their exchange admin. Uh, they had their, their, they had 10 different admins in the room. And then the CTO came in and out a couple times and they had one person from marketing and communications. And we went through the day, we documented all this stuff and they constantly reminded us of the whole do more with less mantra that has become the IT cornerstone for how not to do, but we're going to do IT. Um, and I sat down with the CTO on the way out and like, talk to me about your lessons learned. What did you, what did you take away from this? He went, so two years ago, we got rid of all of our BAs and uh, they were just looking now at rolling out M365 to a group of scientists from the age of college to 90 who won't retire. And he's just like, the, the the number one takeaway is I have to go back and hire BAs. Like, how can I support this? How can I be a mission enabler if I don't have people who can sit down and do requirements analysis and figure out how do those requirements meet the technology? So it's you mentioned BAs, and I could go off for an hour on just that conversation. And the SDLC comes full circle. Right. <laughs> well, I, so, I had to, so I started my career as a BA. So 
uh, technical writer and BA, so that's where I started 30 years ago. But I'd say uh, on the other end of the customer journey, that just like we need BAs at the front end of that process and throughout, but it really at the front end of that, yep. customer success on the back end is essentially like the 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 flip side of the BA. It's at the end of that, and when mm -hmm. you look at the customer relationship and you look at retention and you know and all those facts you know having customer success it's so many businesses and microsoft included is recognizing how important that role really is so just to clarify when you say ba we're talking about business analysts and not correct. how that acronym can be used for correct things, right? business <laughs> analysts yes business analysts in general and a lot of times business analysts go by other titles such as architects, solution architect, data analyst, but essentially, yeah, that that kind of architecture analyst role, I think in general, um, the person is coming can, back. Yeah, the person who can translate between the business need and the technological mm -hmm. capability. Right, Patrick. That, that person. Right. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is for good governance and good maturity, uh, companies really need to understand what their their full investment into technology is. And it's not just a matter of hiring a bunch of devs and admins to click buttons, that there's actually more to it. Right. Ha, ha, it's funny, Go governance is really about having shared understanding and agreeing on a path forward, a plan. Yeah, that's well, what that's it is. Yeah, are we are we recording? Is this ready to go yet or